basically my my take on things is I'm going to be talking about earth energies and how I think my view how I think ancient man used them more more to, for setting up things and I'll explain what I mean in a minute going back to what John was saying about our knowledge etc my uh, my background was in, uh, after many years in <coughs> BT, was designing digital telephone exchanges with pure logic circuits. So you've got that on one side of your brain, that's the left brain taken care of, logic circuits, and the right hand brain, you're doing dowsing, healing, palmistry, all, all the other stuff. So keeping that together without one side overriding the other is quite difficult. But what I did find is one side will work and the other side will just throw in your question etc. just to check where you're going. So when we're writing business plans for films, is one of the things we actually do, the logic side says write a nice firm business plan and the, the right side of the brain is throwing a lot of comments and things just to make it a bit more marketable. Things like that. So when I'm, when I'm doing things I'm thinking yeah that's the logical way of doing it but what am I actually doing that? When we actually look at the terms we use, where it's alignments, sight lines, dragon paths, spirit paths, ley lines, and so on, all of those terms are rather wonderful. And as you probably know, and found to your cost, at various times um, in certain situations, they've been the subject of either discussion or outright argument over a pint as to whether they exist or whether it's our imagination or not. And I've had all sorts of discussions like that with people. My view is what you see out there now, and what you go around and measure, photograph, and so on, is the finished product. What I'm going to be looking at is how did they set them up in the first place? How do they produce these alignments? And I'm going to give you three, I'm going to demonstrate three ways of producing earth currents here. First one's going to be using an inanimate object. The second one's going to be using two broom handles <laughs> and two volunteers that I've yet to pick from the front here. <laughs> and the third one's actually going to be um, a pure intent one of forcing a line between two inanimate objects up here just by thought power alone. I can see you all looking around and thinking we're on a TV show here, aren't we? <laughs> this is what we're going to do. The other aspect that I find, and it goes back to what John was saying, is it's knowledge that we've got. And I think sometimes, when we actually look around at things, um, there is that knowledge there, and it's very easy to ignore it, let it go, and it's gone. So that's why I like doing it. I work with, um, we did a political thing, uh, you may still see it around some of the telly at times, called Bite for the Ballot. We use a lot of young interns and I've had them all out. I, we came back from Cardiff, um, Cardiff uh, Assembly, and I stopped, to, I stopped the minibus at Avebury and had them wandering around in the dark with dowsing rods. And I was just fascinated by the whole thing. You know, so they've gone away with that idea. I don't say you should take all these young people out in the dark and lose them. <laughs> Although, you know, sometimes some of them do. But in actual fact, it's when well, I take them there, show them, and then they've got it up there. Even if they don't use it immediately, they want to use it up there. So, what we're going to do, like I say, we're going to set up three demonstrations. And, and it's always an experiment. So I'll make that point now. Just up the road from here, you've got, um, you've got Roots and Village. And based in Roots and Village, there's a Morris team called the Hartley Morris Men. You may have seen, heard them. A bunch of um, singers and dancers, etc. John Nolan, they're not out there. And May Day morning, which isn't that far away, on the 1st of May, and they dance at a little site up there, the Cauldron Stones. I don't know if any of you have been to the Cauldron Stones? Yeah. No, the Cauldron Stones. Monday morning, they go there and dance. Now, that is on a, a physical alignment, which runs all the way up from Sussex, goes up through, um, through the Cauldron Stones. There used to be a little chapel at the top of Blue Bill Hill. Mm -hmm. with, with a, and now it's, it disappeared with the roadworks, unfortunately, but that little it went through there. It goes through the church at Noonan, 
which is re the one famous for the stone with the devil's footprint. But not only have you got that physical alignment, you've actually got a nice earth current which runs all the way up through there as well. I've been there and measured the earth energy and its default position, it's static. And the nearest I can get it to is a half an inch. Half an inch wide, it doesn't disappear altogether, it's still there. I've got it to about half an inch. I remember telling a historian who was arguing with me that uh, that half an inch we actually consider the megalithic centimetre. <laughs> you can't go how many colours it went before he realised I was winding them up. It happens, doesn't it? But it's, <laughs> feel free to use that one, by the way, I like that one. <laughs> However, they dance, the Morris men get gather there from six o'clock onwards, and if it's a Saturday morning, and it's a nice day, uh, we can have an audience of up to 150 people there, which is quite, quite good, you know, for that time of the morning. And they dance from about 5.30 till 6. Well, they're getting ready, this is the interesting thing, by about quarter past five in the morning, when they're putting their stuff on and the, the bells and the ribbons and the audience is gathering and the excitement's building, that earth energy grows to about four foot wide. <coughs> By the time they start dancing at half past six, it's about eight foot wide. Half an hour later, when they've finished, it's actually the width of the dance line, which is what, 60 foot across. And that's just with one, one group dancing there. That power going into that earth energy that exists. Now, the thing is, we don't know. One thing we don't know is whether or not that opens up as a pulse, slowly moving down the, the actual alignment, or whether it opens up instantaneously along its width. Um, the reason we've never found out is because if you're going to get up that time in the morning, you want to go and watch the dancing, not stand in the field with the thousands. That's the main reason. But we would have to measure that one day. That stays there, that wide, starts to decay, takes about four to five days to decay back to nothing, which is quite interesting. So again, the way I look at it is, when, we, when the ancient man set up these temporary earth currents for surveying purposes, once it was done, if you needed them there, we use the old knocking on the rock technique to, to fix them, failing that, leave them, and they just disappear. Now that bunch of men, we're talking about the Hartley Morris men, being the... Oh, oh, I've disturbed the scene here. They belong to the Morris Ring of England. And when you join the Morris Ring of England, you get one of these. And it's basically a stick, painted white with red, uh, red tape on. And that is basically the staff of office. Now, this one actually uh, was loaned to me by the North British um, sword team because they, this is completely unadorned and that's what it looks like. That's what the original one looks like when you join uh, the Morris Wing of England. The group I'm talking about, the Hartley Morris men, being a bunch of posers that they are. <laughs> I modified the ears to include the blue, so they get their full colours, and at each end and in the middle they've got silver caps with all the names of the officers and the years they've served. So what you've got there is a 60 odd year history of a Morris team. That's all it is though, it's basically a stick with tape on there and some silver. And what I'm going to do is actually, um, I could put it down the side, I'll, I'll just, what I'm actually going to do is put it down over here, make sure there's, there's no, um, no earth currents down there. So I'll put it in. Oh, I'll tell you, I'll put it down the ear once. I mean, it can, although it's down the side, it's going to, it can stay there all day out of everybody's way, but you can all measure it to see if anything happens. Okay. Yeah, just stick it down. <coughs> That's it. And then um, we'll check that later on to see if anything happens. And down it comes, we'll have to talk over. Interestingly enough, when we, uh, when we tested this one to see if anything happened with this, you're going to be surprised actually, because what I'm going to do, um, 
This one has not been adorned, but it's actually owned by, say, the North British Sword Team. And when you actually go across it, I'll just lay that across there. Um, you can, and you feel free to actually do this. There you go. And they start pushing out the. Amazing, that, isn't it? When you see that one down there, how powerful that gets. And hopefully, by the end of the day, that's going to have to go out through the walls, etc. So, we'll come back to why we think that works. Any questions so far? Feel free to ask questions. I don't regard questions as harassment. <laughs> Some people do. You know, you said um, when they were up on the um, uh, cold and storms and uh, the width uh, increased. Was that <coughs> due to the activity of the people up there, or was it the time of the day, or was it a combination of both? Could be a combination of both. I mean, we we have been up there in other days just just to have a route around, just to make sure that um, it is, as you say, circumstance, and uh, it hasn't gone out there. So I think it's down to the. The activities and the thought processes, the excitement building up, the crowd gathering, that energy being around. Um, but also, one interesting thing is how long it takes to, to, to actually decay and just, just melt away, which is again one of the things. So, if these aren't needed, the, once these alignments are set up, these surveying lines, as I call them, are set up, once, they, once they're done, then you um, you don't actually, if you don't need them, just take the power away for one of a better term and they just watch it disappear. Or again, if they're in the wrong place, you can move it and that one goes and you're using this one now. So there's going to be times, you know, clever as they were, there could be times when they just adjusted them for, for different reasons. Now, we have here two broom handles. Not four candles. <laughs> what I'm actually going to do is um, lay these down on the floor, and uh, we could, could do it up here. Could do it up here actually. I'll just make sure there's no. Um, have, we, have we got any any actual natural dowsers here? I just want to volunteer. There you go. Yeah. It's worth it for the walk, isn't it? The walk yeah, path. It is actually. I'll, I'll do my heavy metal trick. <laughs> I've got a set of the uh, Hamish Miller books. Um, oh, really? Yeah, I'm going to get them. Brilliant, yes. Yeah. What I want to do is, yeah, I want to set them up here, but I want to make sure there's nothing there. With, yeah, what do you want me? Uh, if you could just come in. What's your name, by the way? Dave. 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 Yeah, just make sure if there's nothing there, then what I can actually do. Yeah, just to make sure when I put these down, we're not, we're not actually going across the Show me the earth energy on the next few feet. Tell me when to stop. Oh, the stop soon now. You was all tainted, though, wasn't you? <laughs> Especially with day shift. <laughs> Just going to put those end to end, and that the idea is we just want someone to walk up and down the other side and help generate. Well, we'll see what happens. Shall we show me the next line of energy? Just begin it in there, is it? Yeah, okay. Now, if you, I think what I used to do, this is if you could actually do this, just put them down like this. <laughs> Walking up and down in time. I'm going to make my own way down. That's not bad. I'm just going to it. They've detected slightly your aura energy. Yes. It must be pulsing away. I've never, oh. had, I've never had that before. It just twitched slightly. Either that or will be. It's, it's that natural dark to show you, though. It doesn't work. <laughs> okay. That's done enough of that. I'll cut up that really. Right, so if you hang on, on there, Dave, for a minute, one more, one more task. So I've got a rod over there throbbing away. We've got two broomsticks here. <laughs> this must have got a blue painter, isn't it? Lots <laughs> <laughs> of sticky back plastic. Where did you park yours then? <laughs> <laughs> right. 
Now, what are we going to do? Let's go for a beer, shall we? Sorry. Yes. <laughs> Come on. What she's going to do is she's going to put these, um, put these to one side there. Right. Could you, Dave, just check to make sure there's nothing going on? There's nothing going on. <laughs> there is, there's nothing on, on, uh, on the edge there. Show me any edges that are on the edge. <laughs> Whoa, no, well, there's something in yeah. this from. I think no, this is. I can speak. Yep, yeah, sorry. Uh, no, no, sorry, one minute. Hi, Joe. Yeah. Um, years, a couple of years ago, I had a master class in dousing from Pat Toms, uh, who is an incredible dowser, and was able to show the difference between a concave and a convex corner, and why some were just certain shapes. Once, once you were tuned in, it took a few minutes to get tuned in, but you've never seen anything like it. So. I'm not surprised that the rods are picking up something from the edge, which may not be an earth energy, but it is an energy. Okay. Sorry. Right, I'll put, these, I'll put these in a little bit then. And then what I'm going to do, I won't put them too far away, because... Right, no, no, no. Just show, show the images between the two? Yeah, I want... I'm going to ask that I can actually form an energy line between those two tankards. And this is the, the really experimental one because uh, normally to do this you have a, have a you know, almost 100% concentration. But I'm doing this in the middle of a, a presentation. So we'll see what happens. So bear with me on this one. So we're just going to see what happens now. I'll ask for an energy line to go between those two. Let's see what happens. Are you ensure if I fall off, Lawrence? Depends on your label. Oh, you might take a while to get that one guy. Um, there's something pulsing at the back, probably from you. I can feel it in my hand. Try. And in terms of my asthma, I shouldn't do that. Show the, show the energy line between the two beer, beer cans. Show the energy line between the two beer cans or beer, beer tankets. Okay. Thank you, man. Lovely. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Interesting, yeah. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you, Dave. Super. That'd be super. <coughs> so what I'll do, I know Lawrence is a dad, I'm just going to ask Lawrence to just see if that's, um, that one down there is pushing out. Lawrence. <coughs> <coughs> Lawrence, just swallow it, Lawrence, where it was. Yeah, is, it, is, it, is it still pushing my hand that way? Yeah, that's, that's all right. Yeah, you should be able to measure it outside. So still still crossing. Right. Still crossing. Where did they go before? <coughs> well, no, that's it. Then what we'll do is when we have a break, we'll look outside. We should be crossing yes. outside. Thank you, Lord. So where did they go before you did that? Where did they go? Oh, it's expanded. Well, what was that? What's happening? Where, where do you put that stick down? I'm just going to start pushing the energy line. So I. Okay. Right. <coughs> so what we've actually got is a staff of office down there, pushed out a line now. If you think about it, the reason I've come up with three different methods is because I think when you uh, when they were setting things up, this is my view again, my view again, when they're setting things up, they had different needs at that particular time. By that I mean when they were setting up the first line out of a group of alignments, 
you use the staff. Now, like I say, <coughs> it's a staff of office. But imagine a wizard. Put down his staff, like that. I want to go there. He may have some at the other end directing him, but once it's done, that's it. That's the line it's going out there, dead straight across country. I don't believe that we're wizards, they just went zap, which is this sort of cartoon thing. Somewhere down the line, that changed into a more active version of the wizard or the wise man, the hunt, the saint. Whoever it was putting this rod down and just fire off this line, it changed into this more active thing. A bit like in the very early days, all pirates spoke like sailors. I mean, Robert Newton came along, didn't he, in Treasure Island? And after that, everybody had to go, hi, you like rest of it. And from that moment on, no pirate sounded convincing unless he was doing pirate speak. It's one of those things. So, somewhere down the line, it changed. Now, if you, I mean, that's, that staff down here is what, 60 years old? Okay, the wood may be older, but the point is, it's, a, it's got a 60 year old history down there. For the almost foundation laying, stone laying ceremony of starting an alignment off, you can imagine, I can imagine the, the holy man, the priest, the wizard, gathering the clan around and starting the thing off. Power. Because also in those days, I would suspect that they are actually more able to detect earth currents themselves. I, now and then I go out to see my daughter in, uh, in Adelaide and because in Australia the Neolithic man did mainly in the centre whereas all the uh, immigrants live around the outside on the beach, you have a situation where there's very few earth currents on the outside, very few. Where there's churches and such like, they're obviously building their own. But you go around there, thousands around there, and there's very little, very little at all. But you, to the point where you almost feel it as you walk past something. And one of, her, one of my daughter's friends, uh, Lucy, when she comes home, because uh, she's an expat, she's a therapist out there, when she comes home, well, out there, it takes her a long time to ground herself after a session with someone, coming home, as she steps off the plane, she describes it as wearing diving boots. We've got so much energy, oh yes, I'm home. Just feel grounded straight away. So, I think for starting things off, they used that method. And the staff probably had lots of magic symbols carved into it, etc. Could be hundreds of years old, handed down, and so on. And even the Aborigines. Where the, the, uh, the wise man there is pointing the bone at someone, he points the bone and then job done. That's a couple out in What about this one though? My two broom handles. <coughs> okay. You've seen it's demonstrated, it, it, it's producing a line, it's coming out the end. I'm just going to do an imitation now and see if it re I want you to tell me who it reminds you of. It's a chalk figure. Yeah. 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 Honey, or honey? Who's the mathematician that came out with a spiral started at Silbury Hill with a spiral? Sorry? That's it. And he shows all these lines come around and, and uh, with everything in you know, other isosceles or equilateral triangles going all the way around. It's fabulous. Two people with these. I think these were the field workers. They were sent out to do the alignments out there. So the high priest, whoever set up up there. And then, once he was going, the other, the other chaps are set out with their poles to actually do the diamond. Now, standing like that, it was, it's often thought that they put one down and use their one to the side, but in actual fact, they could have just laid it down and puff off it fires. 
grown a little ritual down there. We did an experiment in the, um, in the middle of Rootsham Town Centre with the Morris men. Uh, we doused the actual village centre and worked out where the, the drains and pipes were and then got the team to dance, got one team to dance and the other team to dance afterwards. After they finished dancing, right down the centre of where they were dancing, this line disappeared. Disappeared after a while, but that line, the energy current was there. So, if, my view, once they're out there, these people wandering around, making sure the arms are square, etc. And, because one of the nice things is the, um, whenever I show that, I'm sad, like I say, sadly I'm open, but we've got some pictures of some of the alignments he's actually shown. <coughs> and I've shown it to people, and, and they come, the arguments usually come down in one of two forms. One is, um, how did ancient man have the knowledge to work out isosceles and equilateral triangles? How did they have this mathematical knowledge? I like it, as you probably know, one of the myths, I like myths, one of the myths is that the mathematical knowledge used in the Mediterranean came from an island off the coast of Brittany, in now Brittany. Who knows? I'm a great believer in when there is a myth, there's just something else behind that. A bit like the, um, the statues of Easter Island. One of the myths is that they actually walked from the quarry to, the, to where they're situated. They've been dragged, they've been towed, they've been on the sledges, and then a group of people went down there, stood one up, put ropes around its neck, got it wobbling, and then just twisted it and walked, walked it along. And I don't know if you've ever seen the video of it, it's quite fascinating to watch one of these statues just walking. Same way as you or I would actually get a wardrobe into place or a fridge under the, under the unit. I was doing that with these statues. So I, I always think, where there's a myth, there's a little bit of truth there, but it's, it's almost as though it's been marketed out of the way. They do it. So what about what about this one then? We're just putting something there with willpower. My view is once you've got to the end of your alignment and you're just finishing it off, <coughs> something that is involved, rather than the holy man the wizard actually put in the last line. Imagine gathering the whole tribe, the clan around and say, right, we want you all to just do this now. And everybody thinks, let's put that line in. And it becomes theirs. So they own that as well. They're part of the ceremony. So what could you do? Well, the one that I've done over there, which is again, just an ornate version of this, you could actually take your local darts team, club, family, come here, thank you. Do your, um, put your names on there, even with computer printed labels, paint it in your, your team colours and you've got a staff which will push out a line. So wherever you put it down, off it goes. How marvellous, you can create your own lines wherever you go. Careful where you point them. Yes sir? A um, friend of mine who is, who is a master dowser moves house and in his garden uh, was a large stone. And he thought, well, I'm, not, I'm taking that. I'm not letting the workmen do widening the road. So he put it in his garage. And then when we got outside, we found the ley lines had moved to the stone in the garage in Amsterdam. Ah. Yeah. So he'd actually taken the... So we could crush the stone and just chuck it in the back of the van. And uh, he said, well, I'll take that. We don't want it. And we put it in his garage in got outside. The other thing is just follow the stone. Follow the yeah. stone. Yeah. It shows you how to power that stone, doesn't it? But the chances are that stone could have been used for other purposes in the past mm. and retains that, that energy in there. But I like the idea of, of actually being able to, um, if you like, down as, as you go, but actually prove on the way. What we'll do, I mean, lunchtime, I've got lots of dowsing rods right here if anybody wants to borrow anybody. Or if you're selling that time here. <laughs> but what we want to do is actually, when we're at uh, lunchtime, uh, are you still doing your to the chestnuts? Sunday morning. Sunday morning, okay. 
So lunchtime out there, we can actually experiment with this, put stuff down, and just try it. Just see what happens out there. Just see what you can actually do. If you can do it, they must have done it, or been able to have done it, as, as it were. So my actual take on it is that these lines were set up. If they were needed to be kept, they were converted to permanent lines. If they weren't, they were just allowed to decay, or if they needed a realignment, just move them around. And the other one would just die away. Just please. Um, another question, just a point about the about staff with the red lines run. I was just reading in the Mega Empire book, it mentioned that uh, the, the barber's pole, which is what that looks like. Mm -hmm. Yes. He says that he thinks it originally, because it, the barbers used to originally be surgeons, that it originally came from the, the caduceus, the symbol of healing, with the staff of the surgeons. Yes. And the healing symbol, so also the symbol of Hermes, the magician, and so on. So maybe there's a connection there. One, one of the things, and I think you're absolutely right, because one of the things they, we, we actually, you find out, usually the hard way, is that the people that set up things often put their own hidden symbology into it and people take it away without realising. So it's thought that when the people set up the Morris Ring of England back in 1934, the reason it was done like this was because one of the guy that actually designed this thought to himself, I'm going to put a bit of symbolism in there, which nobody else will realise at the time. Sorry. Digging back distant talk two or three years ago, mentioning that the curls might be the same alignment as the helical DNA, in which case, originally, they would have been at 25 degrees. Er, uh, thinks, thinks, 35 degrees. So they must have had as you were trying to point out, an absolute in-depth knowledge that we're only just discovering now. Yeah. 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 That's the crucial. And that actually backs up the, the point we we're making, because one of the things I believe, what I liked about that guy's work, the mathematician, is the fact that for once you've actually got a booklet in there which backs up what we believe, what we know, what we see out there, what we, what we come across, rather than how many times have you turned on the to have a, to watch a talk about everything from Lays to Stonehenge to whatever, within 10 minutes you're getting aggravated because the person on there is just putting stuff down or very negative or debunking what you're trying, what you believe in and such like this. Oh no, just another one. So if, if, if you get a piece of brush tube about a foot long and cement like with a rail decks, cotton thread like you want to have on a a curtain full at 35 degrees, you can actually feel energy coming out of that pond, and it's a like accumulator. I've actually done that as an experiment with skills. Good term, yeah. Thank you. Well, you prompted me, thank you. No, <laughs> we're here to do We're here to do <laughs> So, Again, why, why, you know, why, why here, why now, why did it, why did all this happen? This particular chap, um, when when he actually started looking at alignments, was convinced that somewhere down the line there was actually a link between all these ancient sites. Because at first they do look random, and one of the, the things that's used against what we believe with values, etc., is that. You can have computer generated random lines, <coughs> and they've done this with maps, they pick them out. So, you know, we've got a line here, oh, there's three walruses in the wild, or there's four betting shops in the road. They've done this. And even to the point where, do you remember the, um, the series you spell the telly with Arthur C. Clarke? Used to open up with El Crystal Skull. And he'd walk on the beach in Sri Lanka saying, I invented the communication satellite. And the unspoken bit next was so ancient man was a savage. I mean, one of the things they did there was take a field, bury some big drums full of water in the field, play it out so you couldn't see it. Got a group of dowsers and they couldn't find anything. Where did they get these dowsers from? I must have gone down the labour exchange. Have you done dowsing? <laughs> oh, yeah, 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 yeah. It's one of those. It's all about the negative side. So when you get someone to do the positive side, I think that's absolutely brilliant. Very, and that gives us a boost as well. So, why, 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 do, why do we actually 
missed the point. I think part of the problem is is because we actually um, are focused in one direction, not the other. And again, some of the stuff that's actually put out um, that ancient man used, because we can't believe he was that clever, we, we actually missed the point. But I think they were. I think they could see. They could see. They could. They actually knew what they were doing a lot better than we actually give them credit for. So. <coughs> That being the case, why is there so much activity out there? Why such a big spiral? Why so much? Why do you think there is so much Earth currents out there from the ancient sites? Why did they carry on doing this? Why did they need so much? Any thoughts? They were well used in the past. Yes. Can I just, uh, when you do the prompting thing again, and I'd love to respond later. <laughs> or shall I wait until you? No, no, please, please do, please do. Um, there's two things that strike me about myself, is that once I've found a cosy corner, it's familiar to me. I don't want to come away from you. And, like, I had a really strange guy who was, well, I used to be in mental health work, this person is supposed to be psychotic, person who is amazing. And they were all my patients, you know. Um, lovely people. Uh, he said, uh, Anthony, you know, get out from the valley. Get up on the ridge. It's real snowy down there. The air is fresh up there. You can see much further. <laughs> That's absolutely right. So we hold ourselves, well, sorry, I hold myself back. No, no, no. It's what we do, and and some of the um, when I've when I've taken people to places, when they get there, they're sort of blown away by what actually happens. But they have to experience it first of all. I took um, a whole group down to uh, where's we going? That's what we, we it was a Morris team, and we're going down to uh, the West Country, and the guy driving us said, "Can we go down by Stonehenge? Yeah, if you like, no problem." Or we could go down the A4 and go via Avebury. To which the question was, what's Avebury? Yeah. How many times have you had that? What's, what's, what's Avebury? Took the team down there and it was amazing, just blew people away because they'd never felt that kind of energy before. And one of our guys, he was amazing, he turned into a Chinook. I can remember him staying there there. He, had, he, he was standing there at a slight angle going, Dave, what's happening? <laughs> <laughs> I said, well, you can't take off because you haven't got permission. That's the first thing. <laughs> You'll be in trouble with the authorities. And he found himself a nice little portal there and he was just, so he was so open to it. Yeah, he was just away. But eventually we got people um, working out. I mean... Look at what happens, and I was talking about the uh, Coldham Stones. You've got a dozen, dozen, 15, 18 Morris men, half hour <coughs> dancing, and they produce a ley line 60 foot across. Okay. What happens if you took a side like Avery, which is alternate lozenge and upright stones, like a generator, a couple of thousand dancers dancing for two or three days, weaving in and out the stones for this continuous ritual going on? Feeding people, continuous ritual. How much energy must have that push out? You know, you wouldn't have needed fertilizers or anything, would you? You know, just, just go out there. Sorry. Please. <laughs> the thought keeps popping up about Breton dancing. Have you been to Brittany? No, I haven't actually. Well, when when they have these festivals and days and all these daytime dancing sessions and nighttime ones, and they they dance in circles. And they sort of wind in and out and tie to the middle and then out again. And the energy there is just like you say when you, when you arrive there and there's not so many people there, and you can feel it building up as people arrive. But when they're actually dancing, it's unbelievable. I know the tune I use, the horse's brawl, it's called. It's one of the tunes I use. Ah. Yeah, the horse's brawl. Really lovely tune. Um, as my friend said, he said, I don't 
I don't like the French, but that's half Breton, which makes it half Celtic, which makes it half Irish, which makes it all right. <laughs> <laughs> Just one. Have you done the one where we also had a memory? Yes. Yeah, with the anger and the. Yeah. It's always good. You can talk about that one later. So, any questions what we've talked about so far? I mean, is it in some standard time? Do people find that the energy has grown? You know, as time is here now. I'm not way back, but in the last 20 or 30 years. Yeah. The green band, it has grown the green one of the things we actually found is that with um, uh, when we've been out there, I can remember going to various sites and the energy felt there, and that felt stronger. And I think it's an awareness as people are more aware, and also there's a need as well. People are looking for something other than the purely material world, whatever better term. One of the pleasures I get when I run the group is when someone run the group, when someone brings me out of the blue and says, "Excuse me, what do you actually do?" You know, and eventually you end up saying to them, "You think there's something there in the stones, don't you?" Well, yes, I do. And you're frightened of being laughed at, aren't you? Yes. Well, you're not alone. Come meet the other nutcases. There is something. There. And it is one of it's one of the pleasures I get at the group when you entice someone to come along. I say. You've made the first step, you've made the important step. For fear of ridicule, you are still here. Come and meet like minded people. And it really does make a lot of it worthwhile. Yeah. So in fact, our first meeting is almost like Alcoholics Anonymous, isn't it? I am a dowser. <laughs> I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> so, what we actually talked about there, all, all I've done is actually just brought you, we, I mean, I've given you three examples, there's going to be others, there'll be others you can use, but we can actually go out there and lunchtime and try these, you can see them for yourselves. The reason I use two tankards, because I just happened to have two tankards. One thing I, I, we've actually done it with is um, two house bricks, or two lovely bits of yellow screen walling type thing. But put it out prominent and just think the thought and it's there. Which, which, as a, as, a, as a registered healer, um, we do have some healing and, and send, send good thoughts to people, which is, which is fair enough. Why not? So it's, it's all part of the same thing. I mean, one, my, um, the last time I was in, I can't believe it's that bad. Oh my God, eight years. Amazing. The show I put on then included um, a friend of mine who had a bad ley line running through, or an energy line. Negative energy line running through his garden in Eris. Since then, we actually cleared the line, done everything else, saying his garden flourished and everybody's happy. Yeah. Even his neighbours have cheered up because he used to go right through their house. You know. <laughs> this is a bit bonkers, but it's one of those things. But, it, you know, it does have a, an impact on you. One of the last ones we, we did was actually a house in. Um, There is now on the way down to Broadstairs on the left, and in that particular place, the um, the architect. This is interesting. The architect is an architect design house. It was a last last corner block, and there was stuff happening in the house, and his children were, were falling ill. Pets weren't doing very well. <coughs> when we stood there on a, a Bright day out today with windows shut, you could feel this draft going across your face. TV would change channels where you were looking at it. And he said, I think there's something going on here. And he said, I'm bloody sure there is. <laughs> but I was working with uh, a wonderful uh, media called Gaynor Thompson. I don't know if anybody remember Destinies in Rochester High Street. Yes, yeah. yes, 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 I remember. Well, Gaynor, yeah. who used to run that shop, yes. for the train media, and I was working with Gaynor. And she's working inside the house. I'm on day outside shutting down the, the lines that are feeding this, this place. Birchington, that was it, Birchington. And, um, and she said, do you want to see what's coming out of the walls? No. I'll be out there. Well, what happened was the architect said, why is it my house? Well, I don't know. I don't know. But it was on two lines, two dotted lines. But Gaynor then said, 
Why am, I, why am I getting metal? Why am I getting iron and steel and metal? Why am I metal? I said, is it the rods I'm using to shut down the lines? She went, no, no, it's not in the house. And we went upstairs and they said, what's behind that, that beam? What's, what's behind there? He said, let's dig over. I was the house up. And being a modern architect design house with a corner plot, the whole roof section is just a metal frame. And then the pool is there, it else is bound to that. So you've got this metal structure sitting on top of his house. I said to him, is it, um, is it earthed? He said, no, it doesn't have to be, it's double insulated, I think. I think if you earth that down, that would actually solve a lot of problems, because we've actually got this big area up there, tracking mm -hmm. stuff. That's the negativity side. The, the church he went through, they used to change the, um, the ministers there would change every three weeks. Arrive all these ideas, I want to do this, I want to do that, for three weeks I've done, understand it. So just to recap what I've done here, we've got that stick which is, um, we're going to leave down and we should be able to trace it outside. We've done the, uh, the Long Man in Wimbledon. We've done the, um, oh, I thought power threw it out. And if you wish to, we've got some other um, data we to to borrow or over there to buy. Don't want to take away anybody's marketing here. <coughs> so, any questions? I apologise for the PowerPoint, which would have um, saved me talking so much. But stuff happens, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. Stuff happens. Mm. No. I've just got something to mention. Uh, in, my, in my large garden, in the house I had years ago, uh, we were plotting it with a surveyor, and he was looking for, um, I, he said, I need to know where the drains are. Well, I knew roughly where the manhole cover was, but it was only about a foot of humus. So I said, hang on a minute. We were busy digging, so I ran up and got my rods, and a little bit very, very quickly, found the manhole cover, and I said, that one goes back to the wall, and you plotted it. And then I said to him, you didn't turn a hair when I did this. <laughs> You're familiar with this. This is a qualified surveyor. He said, well, well, we don't actually like to admit it, but no. it is used in private. So it's more widespread than given credit for. Yeah, yeah. Because I know it goes on, but I can't really. Yeah, no, no. So any, any, any questions? Yes, sorry. Wood for the, um, the stick. Sticks. <laughs> Particular wood is special? No, I think they just use a, some dowling. Just use ordinary dowling. Right. But there may well be. There may well be. I, 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 I must admit, I don't actually know. And of course, it's completely painted, so I can't really tell. Okay. But again, if it works with this, um, you want something on, who knows what wood's made of? Don't know what that is. David. Just sorry, sorry, sorry. I've got a young lady here. Come on. Just a quick question. Sorry, I didn't mean to point out. Just zap. <laughs> <laughs> You're now under my control. That that aerial thing, when you earth the aerial down, yeah. the metallic structure down, did it? Did you follow up with that? Did it find out? Yeah, when it cleared out overnight. Yeah, yeah. overnight. Right. Lloyd there was just taken into his lighting circuit, which is earth anyway. So mm -hmm. the point is, you made a connection, gone. But, yeah, just, just, just one of those things. Just be aware that you've got this big structure there, sitting there, gathering stuff. You know. John? Yes, it's uh, what I refer to as the ice cream syndrome. It's where so many people visit ancient sites. And this is just purely and simply a, a, a subjective view is that they go along because they've seen it in a guidebook or they've been advised of it by the local tourist office or whatever it may be. They go there as a drove. Um, they wander around rather quickly, sort of kicking the odd bit. And then they, they go off, and as I say, looking for the ice cream van. As a result, they provide so much negative energy to these sacred sites that they're taking away things. And I think, there's, for me, that... If you visit one of these sites, it's about giving as well as receiving. Mm -hmm. And if you like, saying thank you yeah. for that opportunity to share in it. And you're absolutely right, because that is one of the reasons why I think when you actually go to Stonehenge, Stonehenge seems to suck everything in. I've, I've done a, a dawn ceremony with a wicker group there, and I doubt what they did. They did this one, one amazing ceremony. 
uh, in bulk, the um, February thing. Amazing, I stood there in Stony, I was allowed to go as an observer, rather than take part, and watching the sun come up between two stones that way, and the moon go down between two stones, that way, this is fabulous. And within 20 minutes, all that energy's gone. Mm. Because I think when people go to Stone Inge, they expect something bigger, and are there for, oh. Whereas when you get to something like Avebury, because it's more of a shock, how big is this place? Wow. Mm -hmm. Is that it over there? It's the other side of the sofa. And I think that's why Avebury tends to benefit, as you say, from the positive aspect of, my goodness, this is fabulous, rather than, oh, is that it? Type of situation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, sorry. Yeah. Just, that's interesting you said that because I went to a, a place in Brittany. It was, um, there were three big stones, one very big one standing up, one smaller one, uh, and another fatter one to the left, and then there was another big one lying down, so there's obviously been more there. And when I went, I just thought I'll, I'll douse down the path to see how much energy is coming up. And I was literally as close to as the edge of that table is before the energy came off the big stone. And then while I was there, I had a good look around and everything, talked to the stones like I do. And uh, when I came away, before I came away, there was a young couple came down with two small children. And the children climbed on the stones and had a lovely time. And they, they, then they wandered off in the opposite direction. So there must have been another path because I saw them later on a different road. And, and as I danced on the way back, I backed all the way up the path and the energy came out. Oh, it was fun. Yeah. So you can have people coming there not realising what they're at, but still somehow giving that, you know, raising yeah. good energy. Okay, do you want me to wrap up? No. Yes. <laughs> Whenever you're ready, David. <laughs> Whenever you're ready. Come on, despite that pleasant invitation to continue. <laughs> any, any, any more questions? Other than why? <laughs> Sorry, can you just clear this up? Are you saying that all the energy lines in Britain were put there by ancient men, or they just used energy that was I think there, there, there were others that were there that arrived naturally, but the ones that, were, that we see, um, and that we go out measure, are actually um, were put there put deliberately. There. Yeah, deliberate lines. Anyway, so thank you, for, I'm sorry, apologize for the PowerPoint, thank you for listening and taking having the patience to deal with me, and uh, good luck the rest of the day.